hi y'all um i just want to make a quick video um y'all excuse my birds but i can't go outside y'all i'm still doing my taxes <laughs> so i i just don't want to go outside right now because if i go outside i i just might not come back in i might go shopping or something but um i wanted to make a video just because i stayed up <clears throat> kind of late last night watching the news and the only video today I saw on the, um, that wasn't news was, um, on the North Carolina riots was a call for uprising. Y'all, he does, he did a couple good videos on it. And, um, I really agree with him, um, in stating that that's, the, the chaos and the rioting and the uh, damage of property is really what the the elites really want. It is, um, if you don't know, the um, the Black Lives Matter movement is funded by George Soros. That's been like documented. So you guys go look at that, and you know. <sighs> He's a white guy, and I know he probably gets a lot of flack from black people, but I'm a black person, and I agree with him. We don't need to be out there rioting um, as Christians. Um, we need to settle our, our um, we, have to, we have to deal with our anger in, in a different way. Um, yes, racism still goes on in this country. We got a black president, y'all, and I know a lot of people are like, Shh. you know, they, they, they praise him a lot because he is black, but in reality, he hasn't really done anything for, you know, <sighs> the black community. So anyway, I, <clears throat> I know how North Carolina feels. We lost the uh, Charleston Nine. When, they, when Dylan Roof wanted to start a race war, he went in a church, shot nine people, including uh, Senator Reverend Clemente Pinckney, um, which was the pastor of that church, um, and eight of his family, mem uh, his congregation. Um, you know, uh, the only thing that makes me feel better about that is that they were hopefully all you know saved and had a relationship with Jesus Christ we know that they were in Bible study at the time but you know um you know I just the, the only comfort that I have is that they probably did go to heaven you know I don't want to argue about that I didn't know those people personally I do live here in Charleston I didn't go to the uh eulogy that Obama did um, also, I didn't go visit the church. Y'all, that thing was too much for me. I had a client right down the road, and every time I went down there, I saw, um, you know, the cops and, uh, you know, people from all over the country came to show their love and support. And, uh, even after they had the ceremony, a lot of people were from all over the country were saying, I can't believe that y'all, you know, came together in love. Uh, you didn't give Dylan Roof what he wanted, um, which was to start a race war. We did have some very peaceful um, marches or whatever, um, but it didn't make national news. Um, and we didn't have anybody here really fueling it. We all came together in love and... Um, you know, even, you know, uh, I, I can honestly say when Trayvon Martin got killed, I, I, it did hit close to home. My son had just gone through a uh, phase where he didn't want to wear polos and khaki shorts and a, a belt. And he wanted to wear a hoodie and he, want, he wanted to wear basketball shorts. He's 13 now. That was, what, two years ago when Trayvon Martin got killed. Um, he's still in that phase so, um, but at the time that Trayvon got killed, he was just going through that phase. And he still, to this day, will get on his bike. Even last night, 730 at night, I said, well, you go ahead and hurry up and come back. 
to go get candy from the store, y'all. So, um, yeah, it made me really upset that, you know, it, it seemed as if Trayvon Martin was profiled. But I personally have had encounters with officers that I can't. <sighs> y'all, I've had. I, so, let me tell you the good news first. I did have one en encounter with the officer. Uh, I was driving under suspension, and I didn't know it. And I live here in a rich neighborhood. So, you know, you know, any black person is suspect. And, and I work in an even richer neighborhood. So, I was over there that day when I got pulled over. And this guy really... You know, thinking about that experience, it made me think of the Bi the Bible verse. Um, be careful because you may be, you know, enter uh, entertaining angels unawares. And I listen after my experience with my after my bad experiences with cops, knowing that that guy could have locked me up, you know, and he just really he really went out of his way more than any cop probably should to help me uh, uh, take care of that situation. And he was empathetic. So um, I'm, I'm very thankful that I, that he was the officer that stopped me because I had had three encounters with officers that just went totally totally to the left and I didn't trust cops and Trayvon Martin and you know just adding all that stuff to the fire and my 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 adding all that stuff to my hatred of cops um because I can't say that I didn't you know feel some type of way about officers especially after Trayvon Martin so um I, I know that he it was meant for him that particular officer, um, I mean, he was just so kind, so nice. He said, you know, come talk to me, you know, bring the ticket by. Um, whenever you get, you know, things handled, we don't even have to go to court. Just, you know, he was just so, <sighs> he invited me up to the station. We sat. It's like that. I knew this man from, you know, for years or something. He was just so nice, y'all. So, um, and he was a white cop, so, you know, just like any profession, there are bad cops and good cops. Uh, I can honestly say that I, you know, I have cops in my family or whatever, but when it comes to white, white cops, um, <laughs> the, you know, I, I really didn't um, trust them, and especially living here where I live. So uh, I just I am thankful because he really... Uh, he really, you know, changed my mind about it. just that. There are good cops and there are bad cops. There are good and bad in every profession. So um, I just wanted to say that. And I, I guess, <sighs> y'all, my first encounter with a cop, I might as well go ahead. Let me see, it's eight minutes. Um I might as well go ahead and go ahead and give part of my testimony. I, for long story short, I got arrested for something that was bigger than I even knew about. And they, the officer that arrested me was power hungry. Um, that, and that was my first time getting arrested. Y'all, by the grace of God, I didn't get arrested for for some of the things that I probably should have been arrested for. I did everything big. I I was big and bad enough to do, y'all. I did in my lifetime. So anyway, um, and this was, this made the news, actually. And um, the officer was trying to railroad me. And this is my first offense. And, uh... My co-defendants, uh, who I didn't know were my co-defendants and were in on the whole thing, um, were like uh, seasoned criminals. So I was at the very bottom of the totem pole, and 
and this officer didn't have um, any right to try to railroad me, y'all. But when he came to arrest me, um, <sighs> that pure, <clears throat> and I'm going to say that, the, you know, as Christians, we know that fear and all that stuff are spirits. I could literally feel the spirit of fear, like, come on me. I was, uh, I broke out in, uh, not being scared. Um, it was kind of a scary situation, but it wasn't, you know, I got thick skin, so, but the spirit of fear came on me and, and that the evil from this man, um, almost makes me think it's just like a, a, a only a percentage of what the Antichrist is going to break. Y'all, listen, I was, uh, I, I started getting a fever. I was breaking out in a cold sweat. Um, just the, the, it came over me and I started getting sick to my stomach. Just pure evil, y'all. Um, so anyway, you know, it, that got my mom riled up. <laughs> y'all, my mom almost went to jail with this guy because she knew that what they were trying to pin on me wasn't right for the most part. So, you know. He was so nasty, y'all. Just nasty. You know, he didn't just nasty. Even my lawyer was shocked. He was like, I can't believe y'all. I, I can't even I be here all day trying to tell y'all how deep this thing went. So anyway, I did get out. He didn't like it and he went to go try try to uh trump up charges on me. Anyway, go through all this. I know, for the most part, I'm innocent. And all these people, even on a corporate level, all knew what was going on. And I was the fall guy, for the most part. One of the fall guys. It, it was just a whole hot mess, y'all. My identity got stolen. This thing cost me so much money. I lost everything. So, um, as far as material... Wise, but that brought me to my knees. That brought me to God. I cried out for a miracle. Um, I, and that's my point, y'all. I turned to God. I, you know, yeah, my lawyer got paid. He, I don't know if he is a Christian, but I gave him enough money to act like a Christian. <laughs> you got to do something. Um, anyway. I believe that he is, you know, this is like a, you know, the holy city Charleston is, you know, pretty much comprised of Christians, but um, anyway, and conservative Christians, but anyway, um, I, I it, that was a whole year's process. Um, I was very angry. I saw um, my co-defendant, you know, um, I hadn't, you know, I, when that happened, I went in a cave, I changed my number, I cried out to God, I was seeking God's face, um, you know, I, I, that's all I did, I was, I was looking for a miracle, that's what it was going to take for me to just not, like, kill somebody, and I mean that literally, y'all, uh, and I want to get into all that, because this is, uh, public, but, <sighs> I cried out to God, and I had to be patient, I had to wait on God, um, and that took a year. And the day that everything was resolved, um, <clears throat> I was I was still kind of nervous and anxious. I I put my trust in God, but I was a brand new Christian. Um, as far as, and I'm not talking about being in church all my life. I'm talking about surrendering and actually seeking God's face for this miracle that I needed. Okay, um, and that's when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, in church, maybe I'll do a video on that because that was kind of interesting. But um, yeah, I uh, I solely depended on God. I went to court by myself. Um, the day that I got there, I just I, you know I was kind of anxious or whatever. Um, 
I sat in the back and was watching people go to jail. I was praying in tongues the whole time. I know my lawyer was probably hurt, hurt me, but it was kind of a soft voice. And I get up and I and I and I walk up to the podium to talk to the judge and just oh psh, psh, what? I, listen, lady, I see that you have been uh, probably naive in this whole matter. Um, these guys definitely took uh, um, advantage of you for the most part. That's a long story short. Um, you're basically you're free to go, y'all. <laughs> the time that I was facing could have been, and I'm not exaggerating, like 125 years if this thing would have got more blown out of proportion just just going through what I went through made it feel like it was just so big to me y'all but it could have went even bigger and I could have spent the rest of my life in jail <sighs> but God created a miracle for me y'all I you know I've told a couple people my testimony I said yeah my lawyer got paid he did his job, but Jesus was my lawyer. It took a miracle, y'all, for this this judge to just and here I am, you know, in that year's time that grew me closer to God. And then but by the time to that I got to the courtroom, I still was nervous. And, you know, my faith was in God because I was totally, I couldn't depend on my mama. You know, my mama could have went to jail, <laughs> you know, upset with this cop. Um, I couldn't depend on anybody. I took it to the Lord. And for me to get in front of that judge, and he, it, he was just like so nice and so kind and saw right through the schemes and the scams of what uh, these people were trying to do to me and try to railroad me. So um, I just say to my North Carolina brothers and sisters, y'all, I can't, this is not the same as me losing a child. Um, but God may uh, be able to use these uh, things to make things better or there's a purpose and a reason for some of the things that are happening. Uh, the guy, one of the guys is from here. I called somebody last night. He's like, yeah, um, I feel so bad that I don't know his name. Um, the guy that got shot waiting on his child. Um, he's like, yeah, that's my sister's uh, old classmate. So this does hit close to home. Uh, for us here in South Carolina too but you know <sighs> creating chaos and all this stuff and black lives matter and yeah black lives do matter all lives matter no cops should be killing uh, citizens and citizens shouldn't be killing cops um, but y'all don't want the government to have to declare martial law like they already had de declared North Carolina a state of emergency last night and have the what the National Guards come out there last night, y'all. That is not the answer. That is just bringing us closer to, uh, you know, the New World Order and what they want. Y'all don't want the government up in y'all business. Not at this stage and this time of the end days, y'all. They're already in your business. They, you already have no privacy. You have Big Brother. You have uh, cell phone tracking, you have whatever and whatever, and the list goes on. Y'all don't want the government more up in your business and on y'all streets, patrolling y'all cities. That's not a good thing. It's not. Um, we need to keep it calm. Um, take all your problems to the Lord. Th things happen. Tragedies happen. Yes. Uh, there are bad people out here. Evil is increasing. We were told evil will increase in the last days. And it's going to increase in the last days across the board, not just on this racial issue. But we don't need to be uh, out here rioting and participating in things like this. This, this is not the answer. It, it, listen, I, I'm all for 
it's been over 200 years of slavery and we should have been had some type of statutory laws on the books that, you know, hey, fire the people who 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 keep doing this so we can uh, actually see some results instead of people getting acquitted and so on and so forth. You know, the body cameras, they did become law here. Um, I think everybody's starting to be equipped with the body cameras. That doesn't seem to help y'all. This is just the last days. That's all I can say about it. I'm not trying to be insensitive. Um, I am black. I, I realize that. Um, but we need to take all these matters to the Lord and stay our behinds home. We don't need to be out in the streets losing our jobs and stuff, riding, having to pay uh, restitution and whatever for damaging people's properties. That's not the answer, y'all. I'm telling you. Lean on the Lord. How, ask him. Get spiritual uh, support and um, ask him to help guide you through uh these trials and tribulations and surely uh somebody else is going to be strengthened by your testimony i know it hurts it does hurt to see the stuff on the news but cnn they do keep playing it like a movie and they do want people to get outraged uh that's why i don't even watch the media y'all i try not to even but i want to see last night i try not to even have my tv on i already know what it is with television program programming so um I just wanted to put that out there, do a little video on that. <sighs> Y'all, this is, this is, I, I can't seem to get anything done. It's just something in the air. It's not just these police shootings. It's just something in the air altogether, y'all. It, it's, things are getting rough. So, um, just, just keep praying to the Lord. Let's just uplift one another and, um, Let's just keep looking up and stay rapture ready. Y'all, I really don't believe we're going to be here much longer. I don't know how it's going to happen, whether it be an asteroid or earthquake or volcano or alien deception or whatever. We get, we about to get up out of here. The Lord told us so. So, um, y'all have a good day. And just pray for our brothers and the victims of all the, uh, <clears throat> these killings black white green or yellow let's just keep everybody lifted up in prayer and hope that um they don't have another night of uh um, rioting and things of that nature we just all need to uh, govern ourselves accordingly y'all have a blessed day i'll be back to make another video perhaps if the lord says so I just don't be wanting to be making videos just to make videos, but this was really bothering me, and I'm sure it's um, bothering a lot of other folks, because if this continues and they have to do this thing state to state, it's just going to be a hot mess, y'all. We don't want martial law. Nobody wants that. All right. Y'all have a good day.